was a big bad pain. Sitting in 2014, number four on reproductive barriers and natural selection. In 1981, a single immature male, G.C. Finch, flew more than 100 kilometers from the Globcoast Islands of Espanola to the Globcoast Islands of Daphne Major, where no G.C. Finches were living. The immigrant finch bred with a female G.F., a species of finch common on Daphne Major. The F1 finches and the later generations interbreed only within their lineage. By 2012, scientists counted 23 individuals, including eight breeding pairs within this hybrid lineage on Daphne Major. The hybrid lineage became known as Big Bird. Birds with different beak sizes and shapes eat different types of food. The dimensions of the Big Bird beaks relative to the beaks of the major competitor finch species on Daphne Major are shown in figure one. So you can see We've got our GMs, we've got our big birds, we can see the GSs and the GFs. So part A, the big bird lineage became reproductively isolated from GF. Describe one prezygotic mechanism that likely contributes to the reproductive isolation of the big bird lineage from the GF. So this is just asking us to name a reproductive isolation that could have taken place. Um, specifically a prezygotic bird. So just let's think about like, what this word means. Pre means before, zygotic, we're thinking about the zygote. So this is some type of mechanism that's going to inhibit two organisms from mating with each other um, before that zygote is even formed. Um, so you could almost name almost any of the prezygotic bears. You could talk about behavioral isolation, mechanical, um, you could talk about temporal, you could talk about habitat, um, or they had different food sources. So any type of mechanism that you can explain that talks about a male and a female um, from different populations not encountering each other or not recognizing each other as potential mates, those any of those would be acceptable. So a student said, one prezygotic mechanism that isolated big bird from GF is mating rituals. As big bird formed into a new species, their mating patterns may have shifted, so GF did not recognize them. Part B, based on the data in figure one, explain why big bird population has been able to survive and reproduce on Daphne Major. So if we look at the diagram of figure one, we can see where the big birds are. And if you notice, based on the depth of the beak and the length of the beak, there's no other bird that's similar to them. So they're kind of isolated and they don't really have competition for their food. So the beaks have different size and shapes that differ from the beaks of the competitor finches on the island. Thus, they probably do not compete with other finches for food, but instead eat food that the other finches do not consume. So they're able to survive and reproduce because they don't have that competition. Um, and so they're able to kind of stay as their own little kind of entity. So students said, the big bird population has been able to survive and reproduce on Daphne Major because their beak size and shape is unique. Big bird's unique beak size and shape allows it to occupy a unique ecological niche where it is not in constant competition for food. Part C, a virus infects and kills all the GMs on Daphne Major but does not affect the other finch species. Assuming food type and availability stay the same, predict the most likely change in the beak phenotype of the big bird population after six more generations. So this population is gone. So we do not have the GMs anymore. Well, that whole niche up there is now open. And so I would expect to see a directional selection. I would expect to see the big bird getting a longer beak and a deeper beak that would allow it to get more food. Um, and so I would see that directional selection. So you could talk about that the beak side is going to increase, that the beak is going to get longer or deeper, the frequency of the beaks will increase. You could also say that the beak would stay the same. Um, so any of those predictions were plausible. Um, and so the student said, I predict that the big bird's beak phenotype will increase in length and depth after six generations. Part D just asks us to justify that prediction. And so the justifications we could have for one, two, or three, which was all looking at the beak changing, was directional selection for larger beaks because the larger seeds are more accessible. And then if you had come up with four that was that there was no change, there's little genetic diversity because all the birds descended from that single pair and the birds are only six generations from the founder. So there really hasn't been enough time um, for that variance to take place. So the student said big bird's beak will increase in size because it provides a selective advantage. By having a larger beak, big bird will be able to expand their ecological niche into the GM's former niche. This will increase food supply. So the natural selection whoop, will favor the big bird's variation within larger beaks. So hope that was helpful. Remember, a bad pain was just assessed by all.